you know, networking professionally has obviously given me the opportunity to land some of my clients, but the most important, or the most important thing is it has given me the opportunity to meet and learn about thousands of people. You know, the strongest point about networking has made me realize my areas for development, my deficiencies in human interaction. You know, if you, many of you may be familiar with the behavior models of DISC, Myers-Briggs, they say that 50% or more of the U.S. population is not comfortable in networking scenarios. So I continue to be a, a student of human dynamics. Uh, you know, Stephen Covey pretty much nailed it in his fifth habit by saying, seek first to understand and then seek to be understood. So I'm a work in progress, so I don't know if I'm an expert or not. Okay. Um, I go to St. Edward's Church, and over 20 years ago, my daughters played softball at St. Edward's. There was a fellow by the name of Terry Ruder, whose daughter also played softball at St. Edward's. So I knew him through church, I knew him through, we, we would chat a little bit at softball games, et cetera, et cetera. And after the, after about the third time we got together, he said, Fred, we need to get together business-wise. I said, what do you mean? He said, I have 43 pizza huts that I am about to sell. He said, I'm going to sell them back to the corporation, and I'd like to hire you to help me. So because of church, because of going to softball games with my, for my daughters, networking in that arena, he hired me to help him sell 43 pizza huts back to the corporation. There you go. Networking is a way of life. Uh, for me, it's not just one experience. There's so many times when you're just walking up to somebody that you hardly even know at a networking event and you just met that person, but they connect with you in a way that they introduce you to a person who you've been trying to meet for a long time, someone you've been calling on. I've had that where I've been calling on a, on a C-level executive, haven't been able to get them on the phone by calling, but I went to a networking event, met somebody who I knew, and that person happened to have known the C-level executive who happened to have come to the event. It's happened here at, at, at Chesterfield Chamber before, and it's fabulous when you get introduced to the C-level person who wouldn't answer the phone, but they will see you at a networking event. Thank you. That networking's not easy. Uh, it can get easier. Hopefully today you'll get some tips out of it. My first experience of networking was about 16 years ago. I went to a chamber in another city, and within three minutes of going into that event, I got blown off. How many people have ever been blown off before? Raise your hands. <laughs> Isn't that a wonderful feeling? And I swore to myself I would never go to another chamber event again because that, that feeling that you had, the only reason why I stuck around is because someone invited me. Otherwise, I would have literally turned around and left. And so when I moved here 15 years ago, I realized I didn't want other people to have that same experience. And so my approach to networking is helping you get introduced to people you want to know. So now I don't have to talk about myself. We get to talk about you. And then I don't have that icky, horrible experience of being blown off. And so I always want to make sure that people feel welcome at a chamber uh, event. And so networking isn't easy, but hopefully today it will become easier for you. This was maybe a, a good networking story, and there's so many stories where networking has done something positive amongst the friends that have gotten married and found their spouses through networking. I found my spouse, she was a referral. Actually, my wife. <laughs> so position it that way during Valentine's Day, that didn't work so well with my wife. But one of my greatest stories is a guy named Ryan Keener. If anyone knows Ryan Keener, Keener Communications here in town, he was actually overseas with his wife in South Africa at a vineyard and just struck up a conversation with the guy next to him who turned out to be the founder and chairman of BNI, of which he's a member. And just asked the guy next to him over a glass of wine, hey, what do you do anyway? Oh, I do some own this business networking company. Oh, I'm in a networking club too. Which one are you in? I have this thing called BNI. Well, lo and behold, he's the founder and chairman of BNI, which is a global organization with 160,000 members. And of all the places in the world that run into someone like that, in South Africa on vacation. And so my story there was always strike to a conversation with the person next to you because you never know who you're gonna meet.